Hey, this is Joe at Graybench Electronics. Welcome back to the Pedal Teardown Series where I take apart new and interesting pedals and show you what's going on inside. Today we have the Seymour Duncan Tweak Fuzz. All right, Seymour Duncan Tweak Fuzz. This came out as a line of pedals. There's a handful of them from Seymour Duncan. Seymour Duncan hasn't had a ton of guitar pedals over the years. Uh, I know they have some digital pedals now, and these analog pedals were out in the early 2000s, I believe. They definitely flew under the radar to some extent. They don't have the sort of long lasting name of like Boss or Ibanez, uh, even Digitech at the time. But they also don't have that boutique flair of some smaller builder. Seymour Duncan's a very well-known name, just not necessarily guitar pedals, which is unfortunate because this is actually a really great pedal and a great first fuzz, I would say. It takes the classic fuzz face circuit and with one important modification, turns it into a very versatile pedal. I picked up this pedal used and I happened to have the original purchase receipt from Guitar Center in Paramus, New Jersey, and it was bought for $100. So it was a very affordable pedal, uh, new when it was sold, and they I think they sell anywhere between like 75 and 100 bucks right now. So they really haven't depreciated. For that 100 bucks, you get a nicely built pedal. Like I said, it's the classic fuzz circuit. It's what a lot of people think when they think just fuzz. But with this tweak control, which is a variable input capacitor control, you get a ton more usability out of the fuzz face, which if there's one complaint about the fuzz face, it's that it's too woofy. That big 2.2 microfarad input cap is too much low end. With the tweak control changing that input capacitor, you can roll off more and more of those low frequencies, let you cut through the mix better, work better on bass guitars, and overall just give you a wider variety of utility out of the fuzz pedal. So anyway, let's do our typical teardown business. So we have a folded steel enclosure. I believe it's uh, 18 gauge or so. Powder coated yellow on top and the underside is black. Chicken head style knobs. The tweak control is a switch, a rotary switch. The volume and gain feel like standard potentiometers. Latching foot switch, probably true bypass with a standard three pole double throw. Top mounted jacks, we have our DC jack, which appears to be PCB mounted and two of the isolated plastic quarter inch jacks. On the back, we have a nice rubber pad. Enclosure is held together by what looks like sheet metal screws. We've got some stickers, information, some QC pass stickers and the model number, which was SFX02. And it's marked on the top, nine volt DC center negative. So we're expecting either a voltage inverter or a, P, uh, excuse me, an MPN transistor based fuzz face. Tweak Fuzz, we got the Seymour Duncan logo, little three millimeter red LED. Tweak Fuzz here was actually based on an earlier pedal, the Afro Fuzz from Dirty Boys Pedals, which was the same fuzz face with the in a variable input uh, capacitor control. So this one technically wasn't a design of Seymour Duncan, but they presumably licensed the design and the overall look and art feel because the other, the Afro Fuzz looks similar and they just brought it into the mainstream with what I would say is one of the most useful mods on a fuzz face, excluding maybe a, a external bias control. So that's about it for the externals. Let's go ahead and crack it open. All right, so here is the inner assembly for the Seymour Duncan Tweak Fuzz. We've got a two PCB design here. The smaller daughter board here has the capacitors for the input capacitor switch. And the larger board here is the main circuit with the transistors. In this case, they're surface mount transistors, almost definitely silicon, and the two quarter inch jacks and the DC jack. On the main board here, all surface mount components except for this capacitor here, C2. Judging by the fuzz face circuit, I'm gonna assume this is a 10 nanofarad output cap. And it is 10 nanofarad, so probably output cap, yes. We have a couple electrolytic capacitors here. The C4 here, this is most likely a power supply filter. And C3 over here is probably the bypass cap for the gain control, 22 microfarad, I'd assume. And filter cap is uh, also 22 microfarad. And as far as brand, it says forever. Not familiar with that brand. I don't see any manufacturer marks for the quarter inch jacks. They look like pretty standard plastic jacks. You can see here the input jack is a stereo jack. So that middle ring connection is gonna be used to disconnect the battery when no input 
output jack is put into place. The output jack is just a standard mono jack. Here's a little three millimeter red LED. Flip side of this has just all solder points. Seymour Duggar Research is put in with the copper mask with the tin overlay. The potentiometers here, these are volume is a 500K audio pot. Gain is a 2K reverse audio pot or reverse log. You can see they uh, attach the grounds to the back of the pots. This is generally not a good idea because you're depending on the connection of the potentiometer body here to the enclosure, which can get corroded over time. You can have difficulty with grounding. Usually you want a more like dedicated ground connection. If you're using isolated input jacks like this, it would have to be something like a, either a grounding tab off the core, or excuse me, the foot switch, or just like its own dedicated grounding lug. The little daughter board here for the input capacitor switch. It's not just capacitors. We do have an array of five different capacitors, including the 2.2 microfarad standard electrolytic input cap, but they also have little resistors. So they're actually setting up very specific RC filter setups with different resistors to get exactly the roll off they want at each stage. The switch appears to be an alpha, as far as, yeah, alpha, alpha switch there. As far as caps going around, different values. I can tell you there is a 4.7 nanofarad, a 10 nanofarad, 33 nanofarad, uh, C4 is a 68 nanofarad, and probably 100 nanofarad. 120 nanofarad actually is C5, 124, 120 nano. And on the back side of that board are just solder points and the ground plane. You can see the foot switch had an interesting bracket this little piece here. This was used to hold the battery snap in place. So this would be inside the enclosure like so. And then this bracket has a little foam piece that holds the battery underneath. So when that's all attached like that, secures the battery in place. So that's a neat way to do that that doesn't force you to have any extra holes that need to be drilled in the enclosure because it's just being held in by the foot switch. Fairly simple way to do that and all you need is a little bent up piece of sheet steel here. For the transistors themselves, we do have two transistors. We're assuming because we saw a negative center on the DC jack that we do have MPN transistors. It's not a guarantee. You could still, it's an isolated jack so you could do it either way. But we have silicon transistors, surface mount. There really be no reason just for ease of use and being able to chain power to different pedals. Going with MPN is the probably safer, more logical option. The code printed on Q1 is 1AM, it looks like, and the code on Q2 is 2XJ. If I can find the surface mount code equivalent part numbers for that, I'll put them on the screen now. Other than that, it's just a pretty standard fuzz face build with the cool mod of a input capacitor here. You could definitely come in, find whichever one of these uh, resistors is the collector for Q2, pull off that surface mount resistor and put in a, an adjustable bias control. One interesting thing, they actually left space for through hole transistors. So there's some redundancy or contingency built into this PCB such that if they, for whatever reason, had a hard time finding surface mount transistors they wanted to use for this build, or they decided they wanted to do perhaps a germanian version of this they would have through hole capability with the same pcb i think it might be a, a fun idea to do modifications on this like pull off these silicon transistors and put in some sockets that way you could socket in silicon if you still wanted it or you could go uh, germanium because you have sockets you could swap it in and out a bias control mod would be interesting it already has the capacitor mod so this thing could turn into a real beast of a versatile fuzz with even more tweaking even though they've already done a lot with the input capacitor uh switch here so yeah that is the the Seymour Duncan tweak fuzz. Let's go ahead and put it back together.
All right, that's it for the teardown on the Seymour Duncan Tweak Fuzz. If you have any questions or recommendations for a pedal you want to see on an upcoming teardown episode, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. By the way, this is going to be the last video for 2023. It's been an amazing year for this channel. Thank you all so much for watching and sticking around, and I will see you in 2024. I'm Joe from Great Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.